Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this second workshop, the Biomarine Workshop, in partnership with our friends from the uh, Norwegian cluster, the NCE Blue Legacy. And Venke and Rachel are participating to the audience this morning. And I hope you know they can also send us uh, their questions because we've been preparing this uh, uh, very interesting workshop that will give a perspective on the last year that we spent in terms of business. And uh, this morning we will explore a new ground. We'd like you know, to see how the big and large companies uh, reacted you know, to the COVID crisis using digital tools to continue to develop their uh, development strategy. And uh, for this first panel, uh, we're gonna jump right in the pool and see how we can drive you know, a B2B strategy, capitalizing on the B2B thinking. And for um, this discussion, I have two gentlemen joining me this morning. Uh, Sigve uh, is from uh, Arca Biomarine, he's the executive vice president for the sales uh, and uh, marketing. And we have Renato Costa, who is in charge of all the uh, capsule, health ingredient, animal, human and, uh, and uh, animal nutrition. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, indeed. okay. So gentlemen, before we, we get you know, directly into the discussion, I would like maybe uh, to give you the floor so you can introduce yourself. And uh, first, uh, we're gonna start with the Northern country. And so Sigve, uh, could you introduce uh, yourself for our audience? myself and thank you for inviting uh, Akubai Marine and me to this conference and um, it's always a pleasure to talk about uh, our products and what we do. So uh, the I've been, uh, my name is Sigve Nordrum, I uh, have a technical background from science and from agriculture university and I've been working in Akubai Marine since 2007, so since we were much smaller um, and followed uh, our development uh, until today. Um, Aka Biomarine, as you may know, we are very specialized in Antarctic krill products, processing and um, making product, documenting them uh, with, with science and presenting them to uh, mainly three different markets, uh, the ingredient, that's aquaculture, pet food and human nutrition as supplements. Uh, and then we also have um, One Arm, which is our brand, branded ingredients uh, business, which is mostly um, in the US, where we have a, um, a company doing both private label production and we have a, a branded ingredient ourselves in the retail in the US. Okay, and uh, not to mention that uh, Ake became a public listed company a few, a few years ago. Uh, we became public listed actually like 10 months ago again. So, so we went public in June um, and um, uh, as a part of a process to what kind of our development process. So, um, uh, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Singer, for this introduction. Renato, uh, we know Lanza. It's a big company. So tell us more about you and Lanza. Well, uh, thank you. First of all, Pierre, uh, thank you for, for having me. It's always a pleasure uh, to come and review the good friends of the biomarine community. And uh, yeah, it's always flattering to, uh, to have the opportunity to, uh, to exchange knowledge with such experienced and uh, business-oriented people. So within myself, well, from the last time we saw each other from two years ago, also within, the, I changed within the structure and Lonza also changed a lot. Actually, we come from a carve-out process where the big giant Lonza have uh, essentially two clusters, one from the legacy chemistry and another one more pharma and nutrition oriented. And these two clusters have split. Uh, the, the chemistry part was carved out. So Lonza nowadays, it's still this big giant of biosciences, but much more focused in what is pharma, biotech and nutrition. Um, Working a little bit on the background, just out of curiosity, for instance, we, Lons, are the ones that are producing the vaccine, the COVID vaccines for Moderna. Um, 
within particularly our division, the uh, consumer health, uh, the capsules and health ingredients, previously called consumer health and nutrition. Uh, what what the, happened within the structure? Well, the structure uh, had has also merged uh, within the same business unit, uh, the pharma and nutrition, meaning that uh, we uh, we are working now all together in um, in the approach of the offering that many times uh, product wise is exactly the same. But uh, but uh, in terms of uh, in terms of focus has different strategies and me myself I passed from the feed part more into the pet food and human nutrition part, which has also different challenges and different dynamics. Of course. Excellent. So thank you. So the we know better about you. We know better about the companies. And uh, I have a first question to both of you, and uh, maybe this time you know Renato we will go first. Uh, so in terms of uh, digitalization after these uh, 12 long months, uh, it has been very complicated you know, for the service provider, for the companies to connect and to, to be still in, in, in touch. So I'd like you know, to understand how to build the trust uh, through this digital relationship and what are the strategies that you have uh, develop, you know, to continue and to develop, you know, the trust with your customer and also with your service provider. Yes, uh, indeed, it's challenging times, Pierre. It's uh, it's challenging times that uh, that obliged most of us or all of us, let's say, to uh, to make a quick shift and to adapt very much. We are all people's persons, eh? us that live from sales and. Uh, uh, being it more technical or more commercial that are out there in the street, even more for the Latin people like us, you can imagine. And uh, all of a sudden now our life is behind the screen and, uh, and wo uh, working everything from the distance. Um, the big, let's say, the first, the first thing that we had to realize, it, it was a challenge for everybody, but we had to realize that um, that, uh, yeah, this was, this was kind of, uh, the game would be the same for everybody. Like we would be all on the same level. And from that moment on, you just have to try to differentiate as much as possible, uh, between, between what are the available resources and the way that we are going to approach them. When you talk about, and the subject of this, of this, uh, of this conversation is very interesting in the sense that. Um, in terms of B2C, it, we act big to B, but we think every time more B2C. It's, uh, it's to build this level of trust, which was, uh, which was the basis of your question. Uh, we have to understand more and more which are the consumer's dynamics at the consumer level, uh, at the B2C level. Also, to are the consumer's dynamics, what are the consumer's preferences, where is the world going now that everything has changed in terms of mindset? Uh, and then to kind of uh, also advise our B2B partners, but also in some way to help them shaping the market uh, in terms of what will be the, the, let's say, the future directions that the, that the market is going to take. Uh, I think that Renato will come back you know, to, uh, to the customer approach in, in a little while. Um, uh, from the ACA by Marine Science Silver, uh, and we had this discussion uh, prior to the workshop. You're very much, you know, in, into the personal relationship. But how did you cope, you know, with these new rules and the digitalization of this, uh, you know, long period? So how how's Hacker is reacting, you know, to this uh, challenge? Yeah, I mean, we had a clear full stop in the last March. So so being from being a photo from the sales perspective, especially a sort of a traveling organization, we. Have not been airborne most of us in a year's time so we have um, uh, not really met many customers physically uh, in, in in sort of the meeting room in the customer office so we need to made, make um, an alternative plan uh, and we spend uh, quite a bit of planning um, how can we now approach the customers um, and the b2b customers as effective as possible um, and knowing that we couldn't do the usual way like going to having a business meeting 
Uh, I think we, we uh, had to sort of build both content, how what content and, and sort of uh, what do we have and what do we need to make. We have to build a technical platforms. And then I think in addition to these Teams meetings that it's sort of d- different digital tools that could support us in coming out to the customer via sort of a little bit different marketing and a little bit different approach to marketing. Uh, and then of course we need to execute on it sort of that inst- what do you do when you not travel? I mean, you spend a lot of time on airports and on, on meetings and on, on, on so, so sort of what do the organization actually start doing? They need to do something different. Um, uh, and, uh, and hopefully uh, we have managed to change our behavior sort of and that we still are seen as present and relevant for our customers. Um, so, and that, as I said, it, it's, it's for us to create the content, to create some technical tools that uh, we are able to reach out with, um, and, and then the engagement from ourselves to come through those technical tools or digital tools um, to look trustworthy and human <laughs> when you're coming through a screen rather than appear uh, with yourself in a meeting room. Yeah, and would you say that over the 12 last months, uh, you've been maintaining this relationship with your customer or are you uh, more, um, is it more declining or increasing? How do you see, you know, the the trends? Uh, do you have difficulties, you know, to, to invent this new model? And, uh, and what is the uh, emerging trend on that, Renato? Well, for us, uh, for us, and uh, also, it's, uh, it's it's challenging nowadays to compete for people's attention, eh? because now that we are all behind the screen, everybody is wanting to do webinars and uh, uh, sending emails and uh, LinkedIn ads and whatever. So we are all bombing everybody to to do the same. So um, what we what we try to do to make it as personal as possible and not to lose that human touch. It's, uh, it's still try to make what, what every time that we might have a, a meeting, for instance, on the Lonza side, uh, we developed our own platform. It's not Teams meeting, it's not uh, Zoom, it's not Skype, it's the Lonza uh, virtual engagement platform, which brings, let's say, an extra layer of contact and dynamism to the presentations when people can uh, write, they can intervene. Well, b- brings it a, a, an extra thing and also gives a sense of experience in the sense that uh, every time you enter a new office or an office of a company that it's not ours, there is something a little bit different. So it's this that we, we try to transmit to, uh, to make something a little bit more personalized in a way and that uh, that would bring people to uh, to to a different environment say to try to make a difference and then the second thing is that use your phone talk to the people use your phone we don't have the personal touch so the email is very cold one thing is what you write the other thing is what people read so use the phone use your voice and preferably the image if possible yeah, I like this very much. And I think that, uh, uh, Sigve, you, you will agree on that. You know, it's the, the direct relationship with the, the customer that is important. And uh, maybe you, you can also add something on that point. No, as, as I, um, I agree with him not also. <clears throat> I mean, sometimes the simplest is the best. Um, you know, the, the base, most basic you actually can do. And, uh, and all sort of the most basic tool we have, not being able to meet people and talk, uh, either a conference or a trade show uh, or a meeting is, is to call and talk uh, on the phone um, and having maintaining a personal relationship with the key people uh, you have. So, so it doesn't need to be extremely technical and complicated, but it's, it's like keep up the basic work. And I think uh, internally, it's also to keep up the sort of the, energy and excitement to do those things um, because it's a bit of an experience to travel to Paris and meet people rather than sitting in your living room and calling around so so we need some sort of I mean you need to motivate yourself and your team to actually do those things uh, and and, uh, and I think that we have some 
the most successful things we've done is as simple as call people and, and talk uh, fa- uh, sort of not face to face either, but just like on the phone. Um, so, um, so, so that, uh, so that just the basics keep in contact and then comes sort of uh, uh, the wider you want to reach, the more technical you need to make it because you cannot reach a big bunch of people uh, on phone necessarily. Yeah. Um, for our audience, uh, if you have question, please use the Q and A uh, that is at the bottom of the screen, send me your question and we will take them, you know, at the end. So coming back, you know, to this relationship, this incentive for the sales force and for the, for the link with the customer. Renato mentioned the Lonza platform. Um, uh, you mentioned, you know, the direct approach you know, to your customer. What did you, what will you say that has tremendously improved or changed in terms of uh, improving this link? Because I agree with you both, the digital approach is a window we can't see a tiny part of what's happening behind, but we miss this contact. So uh, is there any, uh, uh, I would say, hints, tools that you have developed that can help to improve this relationship? Like, you know, most of the people, they, they talk about Salesforce, they need about uh, uh, customer relationship management. Uh, it existed before, but what is the additional touch that we need now to improve and reach out and get new customers. Renato? It's increasingly important. I mean, all the platforms, and I agree with you, uh, Pierre, because because these are all, let's say, these are all, it's a, it's a toolkit set that we had, that everybody had available before, but because we could travel, because we could, uh, we could do things uh, the way that it has always been done, uh, maybe we were not uh, maximizing or capitalizing as much as we could from these tools. And nowadays, uh, the, the first thing that I notice and we notice within our, our work, I'm sure that Sigva does the same, we work much more, much more hours because we are not waiting in the airport and we are not offline in the, in, on the plane. And what does this mean? This means that there is an increased dynamics in the work. There is an increased incoming data. There is, uh, we, ha- we can have, we, we no longer have an excuse if I want to visit Acker because of the superb acryl oil that we put in our capsules to our customers in Spain, for instance. Uh, if I need to have a meeting with Sigva, uh, we don't have to schedule it for summer, which is when the agendas will match and by the time that I get a good flight to visit him. No, everybody's in front of the screen all day. So every time you manage to have half an hour, one hour, if not this week, the next week. So it accelerates a lot of processes also. But that comes with with a drawback, which is if you don't manage that data, it's hard to keep up. So uh, definitely, Pierre, you have to be much more, let's say, savvy in this sense to, to maximize the use of your tools that we have available to keep kind of a right organization and pace. Otherwise, I mean, you get lost in all this amount of information, at least my experience. And Sigve, because your marketing was really efficient before the crisis, would you say that they have shifted you know, their approach and they rely more on the salespeople to keep the contact with the final customer? Or did you see, well, would you say that it's exactly the same thing, but uh, more on a digital way? So, so I think we, um, uh, something has shifted uh, regarding the type of meetings we can have. Um, I think some types of meetings, which would be technical, science, <laughs> technical sharing, um, is more effective, easier, and it can bring in the technical competence um, from where they are. At the customer, they can sit in three different countries. At, in our, they can sit in three different cities or in different countries as well. And it would be almost impossible to bring all them into the same meeting room before, uh, even if you had the video option. Uh, today, that's a natural thing to do. So, so you get the right people to the meetings with sort of sharing the knowledge from and to the, the people. So I think that has, uh, has changed and developed. Uh, and I think also some of the, uh, what can I say, some of the, General, if you have a trade show, you will have a booth that looks red or orange and you will create an image of your company if it's sort of when people are well-dressed and 
they, they sort of they, they give you attention. Um, that's not that easy to do today. So you need to have some other ways of of, of have that uh, communication, sort of the, the sort of the awareness part and the brand building part done a bit different way from a B two B perspective. Uh, so we changed that a bit and been more active on on of course on on uh, uh, putting our content together uh, in a meaningful kind of film or. Uh, some sort of uh, communication, uh, which is more easy to look at than it's just like the things you get bombarded on, on, on LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, uh, which can create some more uh, awareness. So that, that means that uh, it's not only professional marketing tools that you're using, it's also uh, social networks. All social networks, Renato? Uh, also, all social media. Yeah, all social media, because uh, we are in front of the screen working, but we are more in front of the phone as well and in front of uh, everything. Mm. And uh, I would say that, uh, for instance, I'm astonished that, that uh, for, our, for our nutritional supplements, uh, one of the preferred channels from now and for the future is TikTok. Mm. TikTok. TikTok? Yeah, TikTok. And we have... One of our, let's say, most strategic ingredients, it's, it's something that has to do with joint health. Joint is movement, movement is TikTok. And uh, all of a sudden, you have these startups that come and open your mind and say, man, you are losing a massive opportunity if you don't explore this channel, if you don't explore this route. So we, uh, we have to get, if, if something that this pandemic teaches us is that we have to get rid of our old B2, B2B, yeah. B2C boundaries that we have. Uh, thinking, and a little bit like Sigfrid was saying, thinking that uh, uh, all the meetings have a dress code and have an image code and people are much more worried with the content that directly resonates with them. And these guys, this being, being it Instagram, being it LinkedIn, the, the, the algorithms are so powerful today that you can basically direct the message and the image to everybody that, that you would like. Uh, so um, I would say that what the, our, our customers that grew the most last year sell via Facebook and Amazon exclusively. And like we normally say, most likely, these are the company is three guys in an attic, right? but they explore these channels, and uh, this is this is where people are. This is where they get their attention. And if you, if they they are able to communicate better than anybody within these platforms, and the results are there. It's a new world. Oh, interesting. And uh, is it the same uh, type of uh, social network that you're using, Sigve, or is it still more conventional on your side? That's of course that's a good tips uh, that uh, to go into those. I, I think the I think the sort of the the thing is that we need to take a bit more risk than we know. I mean, we need to develop and think uh, and take more risk. So so we have taken some, not really on this platform, but we're taking some risks uh, because with you know you have to be different. And if you sit and think just like all the others, you you are having the same sort of. Uh, it's very busy in the main channels. So, uh, so, and I think that's an opportunity also for smaller companies and startups because they are often sort of creative and take, taken by na nature a risk themselves. Uh, so it's maybe a bigger challenge for a big established company to do those new exciting things because they have so much internal machinery going and, and an existing base they are sort of maintaining. So. So I think for for smaller and new companies, that's uh, that sort of doing things differently stand out and, and is an opportunity. Uh, and for us, I would say the risk we have been taking more is on the content side. So so we have been producing some content and, and engaging in some uh, activities, which has been not the base core of what normal companies like us do, uh, like the dog mushing, uh, like having a world series in dog mushing, like having TV uh, content around it and creating a lot of content. So that brings us content that we can sort of bring forward with a fairly high number of, uh, of visitors. And that's a high risk. And we don't know if we get 
payback for that. But do you think that brings gets a vehicle for for bringing in information out? Yeah, because I have the feeling that, especially, uh, well, you have, I would say, not technical product, but they, they are science-based. And uh, to explain uh, in a TikTok message uh, where you want to go is somehow challenging. But that's the key, I, I think, and it's a great question, Pierre, and thank you for that. And that's the key, and that's always, I think that also relates with some questions that are that are on the chat which is uh, how do you communicate to these people? Right? And the key, the key challenge nowadays for me is that in the past we had very much, very segmented or silo oriented division or departments even within the companies. Like the content that you would deliver in an R&D meeting, it's totally different than the content that you would be delivering in a sales uh, meeting, which would also be different than in a strategic or, or, or marketing meeting. Nowadays, the big magic and when you communicate via these channels or you have to put an influencer or a YouTuber talking about your product is that the challenges and the cool challenge is how do we make these guys highlight the differentiating points of and the science behind of the ingredient and uh, the, the the when we when we work with with uh, with big brands with global brands and they say uh, this is such a sciencey thing how do i translate this message i think that the true value today is in here it's when how you can say this very highly sophisticated, sci deeply science uh, ingredients. And you can translate this to a message that uh, our grandmother or our children can understand. Oh, cool answer. I like it. Um, let, let's take some question you know, from our audience. Uh, and with Mauro uh, from Brazil that is asking a question for you, Renato. So you mentioned that your company is science research oriented. Uh, how's your policy regarding partnership with research insti institute working on bi ma marine biomedicines? And uh, how do you manage you know, this relationship? If we want to keep your, the, count, the, the question, Mauro, in the context of uh, today's you know, discussion, say how do you establish this partnership when you don't know the people and how do you reach out you know, to new targeted you know, audience? Um... I'm not sure that I understood correctly the... And the question, because uh, uh, Renat uh, Mauro question is how we, he will contact you, but I will give, give him your, your contact, no problem for that. But my question is more, you know, connected to the topic of today. How do you prospect new partners, new clients using these new tools? Um, it's, uh, yeah, that, that's, that, and that goes a little bit to what I was saying in the beginning. Everybody is fighting for 30 seconds of your attention, eh? and it's very difficult to, to differentiate or to, to stand out amongst the crowd. Uh, normally, uh, you just find something. Uh, when, when, and when you have all the information, all the pool of information, all the pool of players, you just find something that uh, that that has a match, meaning with uh, the mission, the vision, or the values of the company, or something that uh, that clearly has a link with what you intend the the path that or the strategic path that you intended to bring to this to the specific ingredient. So um, normally you have to be on the same page. You have to be on the same channels. And being on the same channels, then it's a matter of, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that there is no, there is no objective uh, answer to the to that. We just have to keep looking and fighting. I think. And and on your side, Sigve, how do you target this new customer using social network? If you use social network. New, we have new social network and we're targeting customers. I, I will say, in addition to those technical things, one thing we have experienced, and I think, is that when you when you don't have your body language and you, you sort of are not present and showing your commitment by being present, um, it's shown to us that language is important. So that 
we can talk to clients in different parts of the world. But now I can travel to Portugal or just through the screen, but but not necessarily. Sort of, I mean, uh, when you talk to you want a customer in Portugal, maybe you should talk Portuguese or you should talk French when you talk to a French company, um, because that helps a bit on the annoyance and the communication form uh, reaching out. So, uh, but of course, regarding normal, I mean. Digital tools give some extra benefits also for prospecting because people leave traces when they join a webinar or visit your LinkedIn page, whatever. So, so we have also some additional traces and you can evaluate if that's thing, something you want to or should follow up. So uh, if, uh, if I try to summarize, uh, uh, we, we want to use new tools. We spend a lot of time online uh, I don't know if we are more efficient, but uh, we induce a change. And this change, we have no idea what would be the result. It seems that you are improving, but at the same time, are you sure that you won't lose you know, the regular existing base of customers that won't use these tools? Sigve. Uh, I think all, all our sort of customers are somewhat using the tools, but I, I think so far, um, it, we feel it's a risk, of course, that it's for getting new friends, uh, getting new personal relationships that we need to build out a lot of the B2B uh, core business. Um, we are we are harvesting a bit on earlier relationships in this period. And, and that either we need to further develop how to get friends on the internet, uh, or we, uh, we need to get back on meeting some people, not for the meeting itself, but maybe for taking a dinner or some social activity so we can have that personal link to pers some key people. So I understand that Sigve, you know, would like you to speak French, Portuguese, and for you, Renato, you already speak French, Portuguese, but uh, do you speak Norwegian if you want to meet <laughs> with our friend? Yeah, not that much, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but it's, it's an interesting comment from Sigve, and uh, sorry, Pierre, if you allow me, uh, because uh, nowadays, yes, indeed, this, this is another thing that this social media communication uh, helped with, which is you can always hit the button, see translation. Mm -hmm. Because in, uh, in direct communications or in meetings, language is still a barrier. It's still a barrier and it's going to continue to be a barrier. As much fluent as our customers are in English, uh, if I'm doing a presentation in Spain in Spanish, people will dare to ask questions. And if they are not at ease in English, they will just stand back and not ask anything. Yeah, that is true. Okay, so um, Mauro, uh, I've seen your question. I will connect you directly with Renato so you can share the information, do not worry. As for uh, the session, I, I would like to thank you. Um, I will post this uh, recording on our website and feel free you know, to review it and share it. For the next session, you'll have to log off and re-log in the next uh, link that we sent you or that receive, you received already. Thank you very much for this um, insight. Uh, I look forward to see how Sigve and Renato will improve their TikTok or Facebook or LinkedIn communication, and we will keep you post on that. Thank you very much for this first session, and uh, see you in a minute on the other one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.